Hello, okay, welcome to the channel. Um, the reason for this video, uh, I was contacted recently by uh, a chap called Darius uh, in Malta, of all places. He's been asking some questions about my setup on my 2020 T7. He's the owner of a, a 2022 model. Um, for all intents and purposes, that's a very similar setup to this bike. Um, and it's, uh, his question was in relation to the Motology um, mount that's on the dashboard area, which I've got here. Now, as you can see in this situation, this is the Motology mount here. And I've been, I've been able to move my clocks across to the left to allow the fitment of my Garmin Zumo XT uh, GPS and also mount the phone with the, GP, with the, sorry, with the quad lock charger above the, uh, on, along the crossbar. Now, being an aftermarket product, not tested by Yamaha, quite often in, with, in any situation when you're buying aftermarket products, you have to make some adjustments. And Darius asked me about what adjustments I had to make to counteract another aftermarket product, which is the uh, bark busters, the hand guards, because of course, when you move your clocks to the side and widen up the, the, the screen area here, we've got a risk of collision, contact with the bark busters, with the edges and the extremities in relation to your clocks. So what I'm gonna quickly discuss and talk about and answer, hopefully answer the question from Darius about what I've had to do to counteract this is basically show you how I've installed it. Um, one thing Motology could consider in this instance as well is having this system reversed in, and use their, their, their actual uh, G GPS stability plate, reverse it so we could mount the clock here on the right hand side, which I'll come to in a, a minute as to why, and the GPS on this side for the Garmin Zumo XT. Um, but first and foremost, I'm going to remove this GPS to show you a little bit of what's happened behind. And now this is partly the reason why I think it'd be good. It, this works both ways. I've got it mounted here. And as you can see, it's quite a good anti-theft device. You need a special tool or a hook tool just to be able to get to the button. And that would then release, and it doesn't make it that easy even now. Um, then you can press that button that then releases the GPS. So this shows the plate here. Now, you move your clock across, the plate comes with pre-drilled mounts for the speedo. That bolts straight in, job done. So you're restricted then to have this on this side. If they did a mirror image, it'd be great, you could mount that that side. The, the Garmin Zumo XT on the left-hand side, giving you access to that button a lot easier. However, for me, that makes it quite a good anti-theft device. You can't actually get to it without tools. So if I'm leaving the bike outside a cafe or coffee shop, etc., I can just nip in. I'm pretty confident nobody will have a clue where the button was to remove it. And it does actually, because of that, looks part of the bike anyway, clicked in place. So let's have a look at one of the things that I think we should actually consider if you're gonna get one of these is the mounting here of the GPS. Now, as you can see, I've got an eight, maybe nine mil gap. I could redrill, refit that, and get it even closer to this. Take a little bit of measurements. You would obviously have to install the um, bracket a little bit to the left first. The way you could do that is by fitting it to that first, moving it across, making it flush, with the clocks like so, and then pushing it on. Again, it would make it very difficult to remove it unless you've got some sort of a tool to get in and flick the button. So I, luckily I left a little bit of a gap and that was more by luck than management so I can get to it. Now, of course, the main issue we have is the bark busters. And this is the situation here that we're trying to negate is this situation here where we've got a little bit of a gap Luckily, now, how I got that gap was by a little bit of engineering, a bit of messing around, and a bit of getting it wrong as well initially. Um, and I was still having an issue where it was touching it, and I've had to sort of out-engineer it. Now, if I can show you here, 
on the bark busters, we have just this item here. If I get my screwdriver, I could just show you here. This item here, I've shortened. And that's what that does then, is bring the bark buster protecting bar here in towards the handlebars a bit. And again, keeping it, increasing this gap here. So what I've done is shorten that. The threaded side I've left as it is, I've shortened it from this end, created a flat like the original is. So I basically take it off, saw it, file, redrill a new hole and bring it a little bit closer every time. I think it was about 10 mil I've taken off that and moved the hole closer to this. So basically I've shortened these and I've done it on both sides. It was a little bit hit and miss, a little bit of play, a little bit of filing, a little bit of time. If you've got a vise and an angle grinder or a saw and a good file, you can create a nice flat on that to drill through for a fresh hole on that bracket. That's what did it for me, is taking it in. And then after that, I've just used the original bolts through to get the fitting back on. And in amongst all that, there's again, a little bit of adjustments up and down on these to make it sit flush. If I refit this as such, now, as you can see, I've got there, I would say that's a 10 mil gap. Is it enough? For general use, yes, it's not touching. Either side, I've got a slightly smaller gap on the left hand side, but it's probably, it's enough for general use. You would question in a crash, in an accident, am I flexing my bars? Am I bias, am I handlebars going to flex and bounce into it? Depends on the bump, doesn't it? Dropping your bike on its side at a standstill, I would say no. Um, I don't know, how, how do we measure how much flex we get in a set of handlebars when we fall off? Um, we know, we all know handlebars do bend when you crash, but at that point, what's your biggest concern? There's all untold amount of damage can happen anywhere on your bike, so I suppose that's the risk you take. I think I've got enough gap, I would hope, to make sure that if I did have a fall or tumble, that that bar wouldn't bend and break into these. But if I, at the end of the day, if it does, you just get new clocks, part of your insurance claim, possibly. The other thing I've done as well, as a slight adjustment, is undo these. And I've tilted the bars back. As you can see, there's a slight sweep. It hasn't made a difference to how it feels to me on the bike. So these have been tilted back ever so slightly. And then I've adjusted this lot, all the switch gear, the mirror mounts, etc., back to where they should be in relation to how I sit. It actually it made, made no difference to how it rode to me. I'm only talking maybe one, two degrees of, of tilt back which has made all the difference and, I, and it's actually given me all that room that I needed to do, uh, to, you know, to, to gain, to make sure I wasn't touching the edge of these clocks with the bars. I hope that's useful and uh, answers a few questions. I was supposed to do this video quite some time ago and never got round to it and Darius, his email, he's actually just given me um, a bit of impetus to get on with it and actually show what I've done. So it isn't complicated, it's a bit time consuming, but that's all part of the ownership and the enjoyment of owning a, a motorbike, isn't it? And, and accessorising, I think. Um, that product, as I said, if we could, maybe if Motology wanted to consider swapping it around and having that mounted to the right, or maybe we could do that ourselves. I mean, I think the, the, the bracket itself is adaptable to do that. If you've got a bit of an engineering background or know somebody who can help you do it and get that just right, you could possibly do it with the original bracket, but it'd be good maybe it'd be something they could consider. And this is what Darius wanted to do, is mount his phone up there. I'm using Mrs. Rider Guider's phone at the moment. And uh, that's what he's looking to do, is mount his phone along the top. And that gives me there pretty much the full array of information that I need or might need when I'm riding along. And uh, it all looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's all, it's all there, all, all your information. And Happy days. I hope that's useful. The Metology mount, I'll put a link to that on the description for the channel. Uh, sorry, for the video. And uh, yeah, that, that's all you ought to do. I hope that's useful for anybody who's looking to get the Metology uh, GPS stabiliser for the T7. And uh, thanks to Darius for the email and giving me the kick up the backside that I needed to get, get back on the channel and start creating some decent content for you all. 
See you again soon.